Hey Garnstead fans, it's Kimber down in the garden. Today we are talking everything tomato. Tomatoes are actually the number one grown crop in America and in most home gardens around the world. But why? I really don't understand why. I grow them too, they're everywhere, but it's not an easy crop to grow. As a matter of fact, I spend more time fixing and treating tomato plants than I do on any other vegetable in my garden. And that says a lot because I have a lot of different things growing here. But you are probably here today wondering what is going on with your tomatoes. You are searching for answers and I hope that you can find them all right here in one place. So let's talk tomatoes. What kind of tomatoes are you growing? Do you know that there are different types of tomatoes? There are determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. And it's really important to know which ones you have growing so that you know what to expect out of them. Determinate tomatoes are those that are growing to just a specific height. I like to think of it as predetermined height. So they are usually about three to four feet tall and they're known as a bush variety. And this is a Roma tomato, which is one of the most popular determinate tomatoes to grow. Now one really cool thing about determinate tomatoes is that they produce all of their fruit at one time and they are perfect if you are interested in canning. Now they all come with their own problems and they all come with their own solutions. So what's the problem with this Roma? It does not look particularly happy, does it? If you have a Roma or a bush variety and you're wondering what's going on with yours, take a look at mine and maybe you'll see some of your answers as well. So we have a few things here. We have some leaf curl. It's the end of the day and most of the leaves are still fine, but some of them are curled and that's just because it's very hot here. And the plant is just trying to conserve some of its energy and some of the moisture and they curl up during the day, but they're gonna start opening up again as the night goes on. You'll also see that some pieces are missing up here. We have deer and we also have hornworm. So that might be if you're noticing something's been eating your plant at the top, then it could be deer. Yellow bees may be from various problems. One particular one is watering. And while it might be from underwatering, it is most likely from overwatering. Make sure when you are going to water your plants that you check the soil first. Stick your finger or pencil into the soil, and if it is dry, one inch to two inches above the soil level, then go ahead and water it. But if it's still damp, you might suffocate the roots. So make sure you're watering appropriately. Another problem can be compacted soil, and that's when the soil the roots are not able to receive enough oxygen, so I need to aerate the soil. But it's the big diseases that everybody's worried about. The most common is early blight, which is caused by a fungus in the soil. And you can look for a pale yellow spot that turns brown while the edges stay yellow in order to identify that disease. There's also a septory leaf spot, which looks very similar. It is also caused by a fungus. You'll see large brown spots in the leaves with yellow patches. There are three common wilts, which you are going to hope your plant does not have. Ferrocium wilt, verticillium wilt, and bacterial wilt. Ferrocium wilt comes from the soil and prevents water from reaching the rest of the plant. Verticillium wilt is distinguishable by the brown veins that are on the lower leaves that have pale yellow spots. And bacterial wilt is not as common. To treat your plants, you can remove the affected leaves and apply a fungicide that is specific to that problem. Unfortunately, if you do have one of the three wilts, they're untreatable and you'll have to remove the plant and toss it out before it can spread the disease to other plants. Now there's one final common problem and that is nutrient deficiency. And most often that is a lack of nitrogen, which you can fix simply by applying an all-purpose fertilizer. Indeterminate tomatoes are those that do not have a predetermined size. Well, that's the way I like to think of it anyways. Indeterminate tomatoes are vining, and you can see the massive amount of vines growing out of this midnight snacking tomato. I love this plant. It's amazing. I have enjoyed continuously harvesting fruit from it, but as you can see, it's huge. And you would think that I do nothing with it, but I actually prune this pretty much daily. What type of problems might either determinate or indeterminate tomatoes face? What is cat facing? Cat facing is when there's a deformity in your tomato 
And that happens when it's still in the flowering stage. When the flower is not properly pollinated, you will end up with what we call cat facing. Another problem you might encounter is tomato splitting, which this one has also done if you see on this side. And tomato splitting happens when it's been a dry spell and then all of a sudden you get a good rain and the tomato grows faster than the skin can expand. And that's what causes it to split, which is why a lot of people go out and harvest tomatoes right before a good rain. Leaf-footed bugs and stink bugs can pose a real problem to tomatoes. Now they don't really bother the stems or the leaves, or at least they don't make a significant difference there, but it's when they go to the tomato and actually suck the juice out of it. Now if they do that to a young tomato, you might notice that the tomatoes drop off of the plant because they're unable to continue the process of growing. If they attach to the tomatoes in a later stage when they're more mature, they might not actually pose too much of a problem. You will see a bit of discoloration in the tomatoes, but they're still perfectly fine to harvest and eat. Now, if you want to get rid of the stink bugs, make sure you're constantly looking under the leaves and on the stems for them and just remove them from the tomato plant. Those are some of the tomato questions and answers that I have to share with you today, but there are so many questions and hopefully there are so many answers as well. What questions do you have about tomatoes? Share those with us and we'll see if we can help you out.